Hey, yo, what is up, FPG fam? Further here, and a lot of people do not know why Lynn is so great and why she's so highly sought after and touted and why people have been saving since the beginning of Global Tower of Fantasy for this character in particular. So I thought this would be the perfect time to go ahead and break down her kit and give you a better understanding of why Lynn is so good and why people are so excited for this character. Now, she's arriving on the global side of Tower of Fantasy on the 22nd of November. So we're going to do a full breakdown of her kit. Now, I understand when she arrives on the global side, her numbers and percentages will be rebalanced to fit the landscape of global. So we'll be disregarding that for the most part and only focusing on her kit and her skills because the core kit of a character remains the same for the most part. And those rarely ever get rebalanced or changed. So that's what we're going to be focused on. So hopefully after this video, you get a better understanding of that and it's helpful and if it is go ahead and drop a like and sub if you're new just helps the channel out tremendously boost it in the algorithm thank you guys so much for all the support let's go ahead and jump straight into it we're going to be taking a look at cn lin on tower fantasy index i'll leave a link to their website down in the description below and i will start out by stating that these 2.0 characters really were a step above a notch above the rest of the simulacras on tower of fantasy they really elevated tower of fantasy in terms of their power skills kit all of that good stuff and Lynn is no exception so she's the DPS resonance with the element aberration first of her kind and I believe only one of her kind still shatter 11 and a half charge 11 and a half this balance right here is unprecedented she has the ability to shield break but you're not going to be mainly using her to shield break it's really going to be for the charging the weapons and popping off discharge she has attack health and crit which is incredible so right off the bat Lynn is off to a great start now the weapon affects aberration when the weapon is fully charged the next attack will leave a mark on the enemy that explodes after five seconds the explosion deals 25 percent of the damage dealt during the mark period up to 560 percent of attack only one mark can exist at a time this is incredible fantastic right and once again these numbers will most likely be rebalanced to fit the global landscape so we're gonna not really focus on that too much now taking a look at weapon mastery activate weapon mastery when used with other weapons which is easy to do Night blooms will randomly appear around the target and explode within one to three seconds, dealing 60% AoE damage. Every one to three seconds, you're going to have this popping off, dealing AoE damage, which is great, right? Nothing bad to say about that. Moving on to the advancements, and that really plays into the advancements. Um, each advancement really just boosts the damage of Lin. But let's take a look at the one star. Normal attack deal AoE damage when night blooms are in explosion range of each other. Increase the damage of subsequent explosions by 10% each, up to 50%. And then you have the Moonlight Realm, reduces the spawn time of Night Blooms to half a second, uh, which is incredible. So that A1 is really nice right there. We'll take a look at the 3 star. Moonlight Realm reduces the spawn time of Night Blooms to 0.3 seconds, so a further reduction in that time. Night Blooms now attach to enemy targets. That's incredible. And then the duration of night, uh, Moonlight Realm excuse me, is increased to 20 seconds. Just further damage that you're getting and further reduction in the time. Uh, and then they attach to enemies, which is incredible. Now, if we take a look at the five star while inside Moonlight Realm, gain 30 weapon charge per second and increase damage of discharge skills by 15%. This is pretty incredible. A nice supporting capability right here in the A5. So that's really nice. And then if we take a look at the six stars, Moonlight Realm can be activated up to two times. Incredible. Gain one charge from skill cooldown. Gain one charge from using discharge skill three times. Incredible. And then the damage bonus while inside Moonlight Realm is increased by 15%. This is just all really good stuff. The advancements are really nice, but I will say I don't believe they're needed. Once again, these advancements really boost the damage of Lin to really make her a damage dealer more than she already will be. But I believe the A0 is going to be fine for Lin, which we'll get into more here in just a second because of her kit and what you're primarily going to be using her for as a buffer and more of a support character. But if you want her to output damage, then getting advancements is going to be nice and going to be play into that role for you. And then once again, the A5 really helps to the uh, supporting capability. So let's go ahead and take a look at her normals. And we're going to kind of skim over this because they're, they're pretty typical on what you're going to see for Simulacrum. So 5 at attack. And those are the percentages. Once again, we can't really dive into the percentages and numbers. We have to wait until we see what the global numbers are. Um, but we can take a look at some of it here. So we have the aerial, the mud scatter, which is really cool. We have the short-lived, hold the basic attack to release the short-lived or lived. <laughs> can be charged up to three stages. Gaining immunity to, co to control effects while charging. Really good stuff right there. Has some ignore interruption. Falling shadow. Falling quickly from the air, dealing damage. 
and you knocking down targets really nice and then we have the dodge so let's take a look at the dodge just leave greenery interesting launch an attack on the target while dodging midair dealing damage equal to that percentage of that number the hit generates one to three night blooms and forms a field that lasts for five seconds that reduces enemy movement speed by 50 percent incredible right there and you get the night blooms passive can be used on the ground or in the air when under control effects immediately break out and cast the field automatically use a dodge attack without consuming dodge count really nice cooldown 20 seconds this is really nice i like that pretty incredible right there all right let's take a look at the skill and i think this is the core integral part of lin this is what makes lin tick in my opinion is her skill and you can see it's a bit of a light novel right here right let's take a look at it so moonlight realm a moonlight realm of the moon is formed around yourself for 15 seconds in the realm gain a 10 percent damage bonus so you get some damage bonus while you're in the realm you can double jump multiple times so that's where that flying aspect of lin comes from uh, gain 20% increased jumping ability and reduce stamina consumption by 50%. Incredible. Cooldown 30 seconds. Nice. So the cooldown's good. Um, basically, you're going to be very floaty. And this is, you know, great because it plays into the whole aberration, the wind element. So that's understandable. Nice. And you get some damage increase. Okay. When using Shadow Weaver inside Moonlight Realm, which is Lin's weapon, enter the state of cold air where your falling speed is greatly reduced, so you become really floaty. Uh, jumping while moving in a direction will allow you to perform a shuttle and launch on attack, dealing 66% uh, 6 of attack, plus that number, and spawn the Night Blooms. So remember, the Night Blooms are incredibly important because it's everywhere within her kit, her advancements, so Night Blooms incredibly important. Inside Moonlight Realm, which is a skill, a Night Bloom will be generated near target every 0.8 seconds. Okay interesting so it's very important to be inside the night bloom much like inside of frig's frost domain very important uh, another passive when using shadow weaver inside moonlight realm increase damage by 50 percent against targets with less than 20 percent hp so there's a bit of a condition there but it's not hard to meet and then you have to be using lin's weapon in order to get this passive it appears so that's cool another passive three passives within a skill <laughs> unprecedented uh when using shadow weaver inside moonlight realm teleport away from the target when you are about to take damage cooldown whoa that is nice utility and only a cooldown of 10 seconds you just teleport automatically away from the target when you're about to take damage interesting it's almost like a fourth dodge every 10 seconds that's actually really nice i like that okay um, when paired with two flame weapons, so here is where Lin becomes very universal and why she can fit on every single team comp is this reason right here. So when paired with two flame weapons, Moonlight Realm is transformed into a flame Moonlight Realm. While inside the realm, any burn effects applied will have their duration extended by 4 seconds and increase, and increase flame damage to shielded targets by 15%. And this is... Pretty incredible for the flame comp because if you think about it and remember every single flame weapon or every single flame team comp is a shield breaker. If you think about it, Ruby's a shield breaker. Cobalt B is now a shield breaker. King is a shield breaker. Huma's a shield breaker. They're all shield breakers for the most part, right? So this is uh, incredible right here. And then the flame duration extended by four seconds. So this is incredible, right? It's really nice, but it's not anything over the top for the flame team comp, in my opinion. Nothing too over the top. It's nice, but nothing, um, you know, too, too crazy. Now, let's take a look at the Volt Weapons. When paired with two Volt Weapons, Moonlight Realm is transformed into a Thunder Moonlight Realm. In the Realm, dodges have a 65% chance of not being consumed. That's phenomenal. <laughs> That's phenomenal. And dodge attacks deal 35% more damage. Wow, why? Why for Volt Weapons? Does it play into like lightning moving around very quickly? When using Volt Resonance, increase Volt damage by 30%. Once again, can't harp on the numbers too much. Going to be rebalanced. Uh, it most likely going to be rebalanced. But Volt Weapons get a massive benefit from Lin, right? The Flame Weapon is nice, but you can see the stark contrast from Flame to Volt. Volt is just doing so much more and is far more valuable in my opinion. The Volt weapon and the Volt team comp benefits from Lin in my opinion way more than the Flame team comp does, right? Now let's take a look at the Frost. 
When paired with two frost weapons, Moonlight Realm is transformed into an ice Moonlight Realm. When enemies in the realm receive frost damage 10 times, they enter a state of frostbite for 15 seconds, receiving 22% more frost damage. So they get more frost damage. The number of hits to activate frostbite does not accumulate while the enemy is in the frostbite state. Okay. So this is nice because you're going to be able to do more frost damage. And the frost team comp is already nutty, right? If they did something like with the Volt for frost, it would just be overpowered it'd be kind of broken because they're kind of broken already but having this just makes it even better right it just makes it really really nice but in my opinion the frost team does not necessarily need lin as much as let's say the volt team does and that's why i was going to do a video let me know if you guys still want me to do this about saki versus lin and which would be more beneficial for you taking in all aspects of different accounts and things of that nature but I don't think the Frost team needs Lin as much as the Volt team does. Um, it's just not as necessary because the Frost team is just so good. Especially with the introduction of Saki. They're just incredible right now. And, and I don't think necessarily need this per se. But if you do have it, it's nice. And if Lin is filling a character that you don't have for the Frost. For example, Saki um, or Frigg. Then Lin is, is a great added benefit. Right? Now let's take a look at physical. When paired with two physical weapons, Moonlight Realm is transformed into a physical Moonlight Realm. When there is an active life shield in the realm, deal damage equal to 150% of attack plus 8 every second. That's pretty incredible. So physical gets a nice buff from this as well. And they can use it because physical is hurting at the moment. And then paired with two weapons of different elements, gain 15% attack for all elements while inside the realm. This is a very nice universal balance. If you have three different elements, you can still benefit from this. So this is incredible, especially for new players that don't have their element teams built out just yet. They can still benefit from Lin, and that's incredible. So, Or if you just want to have some wonky team comps and want to try some different things, then there you go. You still have that. So that's incredible. And this is the reason why Lin is so universal. This is why Lin can fit on every team comp. This is why Lin is so free-to-play friendly, light spender friendly. This is why most people considered Lin to be a must-have or a must-pull. is because she's universal. She benefits on any team. She helps your main team, your secondary team, your third team. It doesn't matter. Lin can be slotted into each and every one of them and give you some real value. And that's why she's so good, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the discharge. When a weapon is fully charged, we trigger Fantasia. Um, debuffs, right? And release a gravity field with strong pull, dealing damage equal to that percentage of that number. After 5 seconds, the gravity field explodes in a wide diffusion wave dealing that percentage of those numbers. During the discharge animation, become immune to damage for 2.6 seconds. Wow. You have some iframe, some immunity there. Really, really nice. And then we have the matrices, which we'll probably do a separate video for. So that is the full breakdown of Lin's kit. That's everything she's bringing to the table. That is what she's capable of. And I think Lin is going to be an amazing character on Global Tower Fantasy. I cannot wait to see what her numbers are going to be on Global side. Once I have that, I'm going to do another video giving you my pre-analysis of Lin on the Global side. Once she's in the warehouse, we could take a look at that. I understand there might be some Global numbers floating out there, but a lot of times... There's Chinese letters, and, and it's in Chinese, I should say, that I can't read all of it for the most part. So I'm going to wait for her to be in the warehouse to do a pre-analysis breakdown for her on the global side. But I wanted to just give you guys an idea of why Lin is so good and, and an idea of why Lin is so highly sought after and, and why a lot of people consider a must-pull or a must-have. So anyways, hopefully this video helped give you a better understanding of Lynn, why she's so good, and hopefully this gets you even more excited. Let me know in the comments down below if you're pulling for Lynn. Let me know if you're excited down below if uh, Lynn is a character you've been waiting for, or let me know if you're skipping Lynn, right? I want to know because this is a quick turnaround from Saki, and once again, I don't necessarily mind it, but I understand why some people do because it is uh, relatively quick from Saki to Lin and most people may not be able to have enough you know red nucleus or premium currency to save and, and be able to pull um, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and I'm gonna get on out of here remember to stand out be different have fun go further beyond that in everything that you do my name is Cody but you can call me further I'll see you all in the next one bye guys. I don't know why I had such a hard time with that outro bye guys <laughs>